major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Bill Howe Family of Companies, providing San Diego with plumbing, heating and air, restoration, flood and remodeling services for over 40 years. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE or visit billhowe.com. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening. It's Thursday, November 3rd. Thanks for joining us. I'm Amitha Sharma in for Maya Chabulsi. With only five days left until the midterm election, President Biden is making a campaign stop here in San Diego County. The president is scheduled to attend a rally with Democratic Congressman Mike Levin, who's in a tight race to hold on to his house seat. We have live, live team coverage tonight. KPBS reporter Tanya Thorne is at Miracosta College, where that rally will be held. But let's go first to KPBS reporter Kitty Alvarado at MCAS Miramar where Air Force One is expected to arrive within the hour. Kitty? That's right, Amitha. We are only a half hour away. President Joe Biden is expected to arrive in about a half hour. Let's take a look behind me. He will be greeted by the governor of California, Governor Newsom, and of course, Mayor Todd Gloria will also be here to greet him. And uh, the tarmac is empty right now, but um, as you know, Air Force One is huge, so we need a lot of room for that landing. But he will be here for a campaign rally and just to rally the troops around, and Democrats need a lot of help. Um, we are only um, expected to be here also our Scott, uh, Congressman Scott Peters and Congressman Mike Levin of the 49th District, where he will also be here um, just to accompany him for a rally. But it's uh, also uh, Con Colonel Tom Bedell, the commanding officer of the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar, and General Bradley will also be here. And this visit comes on the heels of Biden's speech yesterday, where he said democracy is on the line and urged voters to consider this when cast their vote during this midterm, ele midterm election. There's a lot of talk of the Democrats losing control of the House, and Mike Levin's seat is in the 49th District. This one, this is one of the seats the Democrats are concerned about losing. Earlier today, KPBS spoke with UC San Diego's political science professor, Thad Kauser, about today's visit and the impact it can have on this midterm election and beyond. Take a listen. Last week before an election is all about rallying your base. It's not about swinging any undecided voters in in a district uh, like the 49th that has seen so many ads, right? Everyone is, has had enough time to decide whether they like Brian Marriott or Mike Levin. This is Joe Biden trying to, to motivate Democrats to get to the polls, to get the young voters, uh, to, to get the voters who, who typically sit out midterms, but who help deliver the presidency to Democrats in, in, in November of 2020 to, to take part in these midterms. He's trying to raise the stakes of this election and, and hold this ground for, for his party in, in San Diego. And for President Trump, Evans rally at Miracosta College and he will travel by Marine One so there won't be any traffic on the freeways to worry about and that's where uh, Tanya Thorne is standing by at Miracosta College where that rally will be and that's where our North County reporter Tanya Thorne is standing by where she has a lot of information. She has spoken with voters and she's standing by with all that information. Tanya? That's right, Kitty. We're here at Miracosta College in Oceanside, where the doors have just opened up to the public, and they are here to see President Joe Biden speak in support of Congressman Mike Levin, who currently holds the 49th Congressional District seat. And now he is up against Republican candidate Ryan Marriott, who has recently gained a lot of support and momentum. And this race has now become a tight one, so tight that the Cook Political Report is now calling this race a toss-up. Redistricting pulled more Southern Orange County cities into the 49th District, and those cities have voted Republican in the past. But we wanted to get beyond party lines, so we took a tour of the district and talked to voters in both counties. 
asking them what issues are influencing their choices. Um, big issues for me in Encinitas are homelessness, uh, income inequality, um, cost of housing, and uh, my kids' education. I'll start with inflation. Um, border control is a big concern. Uh, the drug, fentanyl thing, that's just crazy. Well, there's always the economy, obviously. Um, inflation, you know. But to me, the biggest, I guess, worry I have as, an, as a citizen um, is the future of our country for our young people. Um, I can't seem to get over what happened uh, with the assault on, you know, on Capitol. As soon as you start messing with supply and demand on the free market, you end up with what we have right now with inflation, high prices for groceries. We're spending probably another 50 or 60 dollars, it's just two of us, but 50 or 60 dollars more every week or two. Crimes number one and the economy number two. And that last speaker you heard was a San Clemente resident who didn't want to give us his name or share his identity. And Biden hopes that this visit today will boost Levin's re-election because if Levin does lose this race, the majority of the House could go back in Republicans' hands. And now Biden is expected to speak here today at 6.30 p.m. And we will be streaming that on our website, kpbs.org. And we will be here on site to bring you the latest. Live in Oceanside, Tanya Thorne, KPBS News. KPBS reached out to Brian Marriott's campaign for a statement about the president's visit. We didn't hear back from the candidate, but we did get a written statement from the California GOP, which called the rally a last-ditch effort by Levin to save his job, saying he, quote, bizarrely summoned an unpopular president whose radically regressive agenda has delivered sky-high inflation, record-high gas prices, and an ever-increasing cost of living. This the statement also declared, quote, shame on Mike Levin, who votes in lockstep with the failed Biden agenda 100% of the time, and said, quote, Brian Marriott has found momentum and is resonating with voters because he is offering solutions to the issues Californians are facing. It's not just the president. Other big names from both parties are hitting the campaign trail. Ivan Rodriguez reports on the top issues politicians are touching on that could have an impact on races across the country. Days away from the midterm elections, voters across the country are hearing final pitches from big name politicians. If you've got election deniers serving as your governor, as your senator, as your secretary of state, as your attorney general, then democracy as we know it may not survive. I'm here because Stacey Abrams can never be governor of the great state of Georgia. We've got to reelect Brian Kemp. Latest polling of likely voters shows the number one issue for Republicans is the economy. For Democrats, the economy and abortion. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton who will be campaigning in New York alongside Governor Kathy Hochul, says a midterm election is always an uphill battle for any party in power. People are worried about the cost of living. They're worried about the economy, although the Republicans have absolutely no plan to do anything about that. While in Pennsylvania campaigning for Mehmet Oz, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley saying Democrats haven't been tough enough on crime and change is needed. You shouldn't have to worry if you're going to get carjacked going to a restaurant but that's what's happening in Pennsylvania and you have a chance to make this better. Haley was in Iowa this month along with other potential GOP presidential contenders including former President Donald Trump who will kick off his stumping blitz of four rallies in five days. Ivan Rodriguez KPBS News. We have more election coverage at kpbs.org. The KPBS Voter Hub is where you'll find stories explaining key local races as well as an in-depth ballot guide. You can get there by clicking the link on our homepage. Federal and local health leaders came together in downtown San Diego to discuss different respiratory illnesses circulating across the county. KPBS reporter Jacob Ayres says it comes as the holiday season is just around the corner, where many people are likely to host large indoor gatherings. 
Cases of severe respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, are high in San Diego County at the same time as an early and aggressive start of the flu season. That's in addition to continued community circulation of COVID-19. The three illnesses can create a dangerous mix, according to U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra. But he says the biggest battle is fighting misinformation. Don't let your kids get infected and sick if you don't have to because you know how to take care of them. Please don't go into the holidays and expect to hug and kiss your family members freely, safely, if you haven't gotten vaccinated. Officials say now is the time to use proven techniques, like getting vaccinations, wearing masks, and staying home when sick to keep everyone safe. We know that influenza and RSV are occurring, occurring much earlier than uh, is usually expected. So that's an indication that we might have a, uh, a bad flu season and a, a bad winter uh, season with uh, many or several respiratory infections. When people protect themselves and loved ones against sickness, public health officials say it also helps minimize stress on the hospital system. So similar to what we saw during the COVID, surges with more illnesses there's more demand for the health care services and that in the end is straining the resources of all of our health systems across the region from the emergency rooms to the urgent cares and to the clinics vaccinations are available for the seasonal flu and COVID-19 along with treatment while there's currently no vaccine for RSV the medical community is experienced in treating severe cases for young children and older adults Jacob Ayer KPBS News your flu and COVID shots could one day be rolled into one. Pfizer has launched clinical trials for a combination vaccine. The shot contains Pfizer's updated B1 valent, bivalent COVID booster shot and its investigational flu shot. The bivalent booster targets the original COVID strain and two Omicron subvariants. Novavax and Moderna are also studying combination vaccines. Moderna is also developing a vaccine targeting flu. COVID and RSV. A historic grand opening in the San Diego Unified School District. KPBS education reporter MG Perez takes us to an elementary school in Mission Valley named in honor of the indigenous people who first lived on the land where it now sits. So many great people, so many great parents. The excitement of the moment is unmistakable. Something very special is happening here. And the rocket's red glare. Almost 14 years ago, San Diego Unified School Board members turned their attention to the Savita Master Plan community, which is now filled with market value departments and homes. The expected growth here meant a new school would be needed someday. This morning, that day arrived with the opening of Niipawai Elementary School. Years of planning and approvals have led to this campus that is now open to students in universal TK through second grade. Each year, a grade level will be added until there is a fifth grade class. San Diego Unified's newest elementary school sits on land here in Mission Valley that was once a Kumeyaay village. That's historic and so is the name. We strive to represent the truth of the original people of this territory. Olympia Beltran is Native American and a member of the San Diego Human Relations Commission. She was also part of the committee that helped the school district come up with a name for this campus. Niipawai translates to mean a second home. This was the original home and land of the Kumeyaay Nation for 600 generations. Students here will now learn that history so it is not forgotten. They feel comfortable here. They feel that it's a place to grow. Um, they you know, learn and explore and feel that this educational place is their other home. It's off to the gym and this place is so the Niipawai Elementary School classrooms are hybrid indoor and outdoor learning spaces. There's a collaborative library and dedicated playgrounds designed for exploration and learning. What's your teacher's name? Miss Gordon. Good job. Curly Sanchez Silva and her husband are the proud parents of four-year-old Nair. 
Between the three of them, they speak Spanish, Portuguese, and English, a family committed to diversity, inclusion, and the mission of their now new history-making school. So why not having your second home to be something special, something where you can not just be, but actually learn and be someone that can change the future? This school did take a big part of that and honoring Native American history, uh, honoring the you know people of the past as well as integrating what's going to happen in the future. Uh, you know, it teaches the kids the importance uh, to know where you come from so you can understand where you're going. For the land of the free. Something very special is happening here as November begins, Native American Heritage Month. MG Perez, KPBS News. Mortgage rates are down slightly in the U.S., but they're still much higher than they were last year. Freddie Mac reports the 30-year fixed rate mortgage was 6.95% for last week. The week before, it was nearly 7.1%. The first time it was that high in two decades. Mortgage rates have more than doubled since the start of 2022. The major rise was largely fueled by the Federal Reserve's decision to raise interest rates as a way to fight soaring inflation. Pressure is mounting for the U.S. to ban the social media app TikTok over concerns the Chinese government could access private data from users in the United States. Mike Valerio has more. For Lucy Pro, TikTok is more than a social media app. She calls it her side hustle, a source of income. As a user, a TikTok user myself, I would just think that, you know, it would be a little a little bummed out just for the fact because it would be taking away one of my tools that I use to promote my online business that I use on a daily basis. Yet a growing number of U.S. lawmakers worry about the company's handling of sensitive user data. After months of negotiations to resolve concerns that Chinese government authorities could seek to gain access to the data TikTok holds on U.S. citizens, one of the five commissioners of the FCC, Brendan Carr, says the U.S. government should ban the video sharing app rather than come to an agreement. This cybersecurity expert says private data for TikTok users is as compromised as it is with other social media platforms. We don't see any particular evidence that TikTok is necessarily any more harmful or, or dangerous, let's say, from our data perspective than any other social media. Commissioner Carr admits the capacity of the FCC is limited to ban TikTok. It's the Commerce Department or the Federal Trade Commission that have the handle on regulations. With the millions of users in the middle of this, the advice is a proactive approach when it comes to protecting private information. We have to exercise caution because ultimately their service can be hacked. It doesn't matter whether they're based in the United States or in China or, or in Germany, right? Mike Valerio, KPBS News. Local mountains are enjoying a taste of winter from the storm that passed through San Diego. This video is from this afternoon outside the Laguna Mountain Lodge. We sped it up to see the clouds that were still moving through the area. Mountain communities as far north as Big Bear report several inches of snow and another storm system is expected to arrive next week. After a kind of windy and chilly day, we are going to be cool again with lower than average temperatures as we head into tonight. But if you're hoping for nicer weather as we head into the weekend, uh, we're going to have that. Fair and warmer weather moves in for Saturday and Sunday. But heads up, it's not really long lived, that nice quiet weather, because another Pacific storm system is going to move in as we head into next week. I mentioned the chill, those lower temperatures. Look at Oceanside, 39 degrees, San Diego down to 49, Borrego Springs 44, Mount Laguna 29 degrees for your overnight low. So get ready for that cool air. Even tomorrow, still feeling more like December in the, instead of early November. Look at all this cool air really through the entire state. We're dealing with that. And then to our east, we're talking about temperatures running about 10 to 20 uh, degrees below normal. So that chill in the air to wrap up our week. Looking at our highs for tomorrow, we only go up to 70 for Oceanside, 69 for San Diego, 73 in Borrego Springs, Mount Laguna getting only 
to 55 degrees, but plenty of sunshine still on the way as we wrap up the week. Heading into the day on Saturday, we'll start to see milder temperatures move back in as we get into our day on Saturday. It's going to feel a little bit nicer as we get into the weekend. Looking at what we can expect along the coast, your five-day forecast, 70s take us into Saturday, and then we are watching more wet weather on the way as we head into early next week. Looking inland valleys into the 70s, Friday, Saturday, Sunday with sunshine, and then again, we're going to be watching that Pacific Storm System bringing us more showers Monday and Tuesday. Looking at the mountain forecast, we'll keep that dry sunshine around to go into the weekend, but the wet weather on Monday followed by wind on Tuesday, and what you can expect in the deserts is staying mainly dry through Monday, but could have some clouds with a shower on Tuesday. For KPBS News, I'm meteorologist Ariella Scalise. The 23rd annual San Diego Asian Film Festival kicks off tonight. It will showcase 130 films from 30 different countries over the next 10 days. KPBS cinema junkie Beth Accomando has this preview. I fell in love with Hong Kong New Wave cinema in the 80s and 90s, even though I had to watch them on bad VHS tapes that looked like this. But these intoxicating films displayed so much wild energy, audacious style, and delirious insanity that I just couldn't resist them. In the heroic trio, Michelle Yeoh engages in high-flying action with a demon. Plus, there's a plot to kidnap babies, a doctor making a cloak of invisibility, and sexy female superheroes to foil the villains. The heroic trio and executioners, these are not films you would normally think of as the important films of world cinema. Oh, but they are. Um, these are just the wildest 1990s Hong Kong action movies. Not necessarily like in terms of just breathtaking action, but also just these are a little deranged. Both films received 4K restorations and will be screening as part of the festival's Classics Restored. And that's what I love about the programming. It's boldly diverse, like a carefully curated mixtape with something for everyone. But I think privately, like, mixtapes are also for the people making it, making the mixtape. So there's something about this too. These are just the ones that spoke to me. This, they're kind of a personal, like 2022. These are the movies that gave me life. Whose playlist includes a creepy serial killer tale called Lesson in Murder. I hope that people go see this movie because in some ways it feels a little Silence of the Lambs. Most of the thrills come between a criminal and a non-criminal on both sides of the glass in a, in a prison during visits. So it has, a little, has that, but definitely in its own like, very Japanese way. Australia and New Zealand may not be the first countries people think of finding at an Asian film festival, but they absolutely belong. This year, WHO programmed an anthology called We Are Still Here. The really ambitious part about it is they take as an impetus Captain Cook's arrival in the Pacific Islands as a kind of like spark to indigenous people having a voice, but then that cascades into talking about anti-colonial resistance. And then that, that turns into this like um, incredible imagining of what the future might look like. Yeah, so not only does it show that there are many voices in the Pacific Islands, uh, indigenous voices, but that they're really thinking outside of the box. We Are Still Here highlights new filmmakers, but the master's sidebar showcases veteran filmmakers such as Aran's Jafar Panahi. Uh, he's probably best known as one of the filmmakers in Iran who've constantly been targeted by the government for his for being outspoken um, about things like f freedom of speech. Um, he's constantly being put on house arrest. In fact, I think after he made his new film, New Bears, which is what we're showing, um, he's been put in prison again for defending the rights of artists. And his films are sort of about that, but not really about that. Right? I think he's really savvy about like let's not directly tackle these most sensitive questions, but like how do we use allegory? How do we talk about freedom in different kinds of ways? They're all coded. In contrast to No Bears, he's too cool to kill. A Chinese comedy about a movie extra who has delusions of being a great actor, which makes him the perfect stooge for a film company that needs to deal with some mob interference. They realize, well, what if we just tell this extra that we've cast him in a mob movie and we just tell him, this is all pretend, just hold this gun. And when we say action, you take care of our business. Uh, and you think you're the greatest actor in the world. The problem is the greatest actor in the world will sometimes change the scene. <laughs> will sometimes bring more to it than you bargained for. 
Well, that sounds delightful. And I'm ready for anything else on Who's Mixtape because he's never disappointed me. Beth Accomando, KPBS News. I'm Judy Woodruff tonight on the News Hour analysis of Democrats and Republicans' last pitch to voters ahead of Election Day. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS. Here's another look at today's top stories. President Joe Biden is due to arrive in San Diego shortly. Governor Gavin Newsom and others will greet the president at MCAS Miramar before traveling to Miracosta College in Oceanside. That's where President Biden will speak at a campaign event supporting Congressman Mike Levin. You can stream live coverage at kpbs.org. Local health leaders are reminding San Diegans that flu season is here earlier than usual this year. That was a big topic of discussion today in a meeting downtown with U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra. They're urging people to use proven methods like getting vaccines, wearing face coverings, and staying home when feeling sick. Here's a look at what we're working on for tomorrow in the KPBS newsroom. The nation's monthly jobs report is due out tomorrow. NPR's Morning Edition will break down the numbers and what they mean for other economic issues on the minds of voters. And KPBS Roundtable will feature local reporters covering local elections as we head into the final weekend of the campaign. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Bill Howe Family of Companies, providing San Diego with plumbing, heating and air, restoration, flood and remodeling services for over 40 years. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE or visit billhowe.com. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley and by the following and by viewers like you thank you